Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignDetectives.com. Well, uh, several videos ago, probably a year or so ago, even more, we did a little hover effect on our main menu. Whereas if you hover over, you get this little effect right here. We had a few people saying that they're having trouble with their submenu items. So I've added a submenu here. And in today's video, I'll show you how to style your submenu items to get them exactly how you want. So let's get started. I'm gonna undo everything here so we've got a basic Divi primary menu going on. Okay, well, I've taken this back now, so we've just got a regular Divi primary menu. It's not doing a whole lot there. We've got a little drop down going on with our sub menu items. First thing I wanna do is get my sub menu looking a bit more like our regular menu here. I mean, if that works for you, that's absolutely fine. But to do that, let's go to our customizer. I've got mine open here, but for anybody that doesn't know, I'm going to go down to the dashboard, down to appearance. Once we click on customize, it's going to take us to this page right here. Now to set our little drop down sub menu here, we can go down to mobile styles. Here's the mobile menu. Let's make our text color white, perhaps. And the background color, I'm going to make that black. A little bit more in keeping with what we've got with our menu here. Once you've done that, hit the publish. Now you may notice a little blue line there. That's the little margin at the top. If we go back, back once more to our primary menu in the header and navigation here. If we go into our primary menu bar and roll down. We've got drop down menu line color. It's a little line there. I'm going to have mine just black. So I'm going to drag mine down to black. Make sure the opacity slider is all the way up. Drop down menu text color. I'm going to make that white. Again, I want the opacity all the way up. And drop down menu back, background color. Again, I'm going to have that dark. Make sure the opacity is up. Once you're done, hit the publish button. Now, if we roll over, we've got a black background, white writing similar to our menu up here. Great. Well, let's apply this hover effect. So I'm going to go back, roll up to the top, hit the back arrow, hit it once more, get back to that main page. At the bottom here, we've got additional CSS. Now, I'm not going to go over that hover effect that we did initially on our menu. I'm just going to paste it in there and I'll put that code down below. I'll also put the link for that previous video down there for anybody that wants to see how we did that. So I'm going to get my code. I'm going to put my cursor in here. If you've got things up the top there, you can just scoot them down. That's absolutely fine. Put your cursor in there. Hit paste once you've copied the code. Control V to paste and hit the publish. Now, as you can see, we've got that hover effect applied. For anybody that doesn't know, we're working on the top menu list item. We've given it some padding. And a margin, we've given it a transition duration, so it fades in there. And we just change the background colors here to a blue color. So you can change yours to whatever you want. So this is where we left it before. If we look at our little drop down now, it kind of looks okay, but it's taking on the spacing that we've used for our main header up there. So to fix that, I'm going to use the great inspector tools. I'm using Google Chrome here, but most browsers have this nowadays. If yours doesn't, Chrome is a free download. What I'm going to do is right click on one of our menu items here. I'm going to hit inspect. And that brings up a little inspector console here. I'm going to take it off mobile view here. It's on device view at the moment. So we've got full screen. And if we look down here, I've got elements selected on one side, so I've got HTML. I've got styles selected on the other side, so I've got CSS code over here. I'm actually on the anchor tag itself, which is the white link. I actually want to be on the list item just above it, which is what we colored in the main menu above. So if you click on the LI class there, we've got top menu, list item, list item, which basically means a sub menu. So let's just change that padding. I'm going to click on it. 
I'm going to click on the value here. I'm just going to put a simple zero in there because I don't want any padding at all. Now it's crossed out because we're overriding the styles. So if I hit my space bar now and put exclamation mark important, that's taken that padding away and it looks more like the way we want it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this from the closing curly bracket. I'm just left selecting it with my left mouse button, pulling it up right to the hashtag in front of top menu there. Control C to copy. I'm going to drop down to the end of where we were just now. Always a good idea to give things a title so you know what it means. Title is forward slash star star forward slash. In between, you can give it a title. Anything between those stars will not be read as code. So I'm going to say sub menu. It makes it easier for people that edit behind you. Or if you've got a bad memory like me, helps you find it too. So I'm going to pop that in there. I'm not going to hit my publish just yet because we're going to do a little bit more. Now I'd rather that my drop down wasn't quite as wide as this. So if I select the bit where it's just black up there, again, I'm right clicking, I'm going to hit inspect. And it's given a class of sub menu right here. If we roll down a little bit on our CSS side here, we can decide what we want it to do. Here it is, nav list item, untitled list, which is our drop down here. Position absolute, don't need to change that padding. We've got 20 pixels top and bottom at the moment. I'm going to take mine down. What you can do is just double click on it, highlight the actual number itself. Let's take that 20 pixels and roll down until it's the size you want. I'm going to take mine all the way down to one pixel. Could have typed that in. I just wanted to show you that scroll feature. That's great. Z index, we don't want to change that. We want it to be on top all the time, so it's got a nice Z index. But I don't want it to be 240 pixels wide. I just want it to be about 20 pixels wider than our widest sub-menu item there. I know mine are all the same. You'd have different links in yours. But I'm going to take mine down to, I think, well, we'll try 120. I think I used that before. And again, you can roll it down if you want to. Or if you want to save time, you can just type in a value. Let's try well, 119, see what happens. That's almost there. Again, just roll it to where you want it. That's going to kind of work for me, I think. So again, when you're happy, we can either just copy the ones we've changed, or we can copy the whole thing again from that bottom closing curly bracket all the way up to the class name, nav list, untitled this there. Control C to copy. Again, I'm going to drop down. I'll paste it in there. Now we can get rid of anything that we didn't change. Position ad absolute, we didn't change. Z index, we didn't change. Width, we did change. And background, we didn't change. Visibility, opacity, border top, etc. We didn't change any of that. So we can get rid of anything we didn't change. That's great. Now, as you can see, our horror effects working there. But it's sticking out over here. So what we need to do is hide what they call the overflow, anything that's overflowing from our untitled this there. We can do that. I'll roll back down to where we were. It's crossed out our width here. Let's just make that important. Again, I'm just putting my cursor in there, putting a space, exclamation mark, important. Fine, we just want to make sure that's going to work. So I'm going to copy that important. Now to make sure that we don't see this bit sticking out here, I'm going to add overflow hidden. Now when I look at it, it's not falling out of the edge there. Fantastic. So we just need to copy that line. And we'll add it just underneath. Fantastic. A little bit too much of a gap there. Just tidy that up. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hit the publish there. So that's now looking a little bit more like I want it. 
Now we've got a little bit of a gap between the top there. That works fine for me, but if you wanted to change that, make it bigger or smaller, if we just inspect this one more time, we're going to go up to our sub menu, unordered class, unordered list class right there. If we roll down now, we've got all the details for it here. At the top, we've got a border of three pixels solid, that blue color. We don't need that. So if we change that to border none, you've now got it buffered right up against the top there. So I'm going to copy this from the border top none to our nav list item under a list, control C. It'll throw up a flag because I've not got my closing bracket in there. So I'm going to paste it in. Make sure I put a little closing bracket on the bottom. And I'm going to drop it down. And the only thing I really want there is the border top. That's the only thing we've changed so I can delete everything else. Perfect. Great, that's doing exactly what I want it to do. Let's hit the publish button. Now I just want to check this on mobile. I've got a little mobile device toggle here. Remember we changed the mobile colors in the beginning of this video. That's actually okay. If you're happy with it, that's great. That's an iPad. Let's have a look on a iPhone. But let's take our regular page here. I'm going to refresh it. And let's inspect it again. Let's make it a bit bigger so you can see what's going on. Drop down menu. Yeah, I think that's fine for me. That works absolutely perfectly. Of course, the hover effect is not going to work on tablet and mobile because they actually have to click on these links. But that's fine. So that should do it. There we've got our hover effect on our main menu. And we've also created one for our drop down there. And of course you can change the padding size if you want these deeper. But hopefully that will solve that problem I got the questions about. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. Don't forget all this code that I've written. Let's get rid of that. You'll find it down below the video. And you're welcome to just copy and paste it. Obviously, you're going to want to change out your colors and paddings and things to suit you. But that should sort that sub menu out. So don't forget, if you have any questions, drop them down below the video. I'll do my best to answer them for you. Or make another little demo video just like this one. Well, once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.